What's up guys, my name is Ainsen Suarez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Code Server. Now, Code Server is a server-side version of Visual Studio Code that you could run in your web browser. Now, what does this mean? What's the benefit? Well, the benefit is that you can run this version of Visual Studio Code remotely, anywhere you go. And that means the device that you run it on doesn't have to be uh, so good for development. It could be a Chromebook or a tablet. It could be something that's not made for development, but with this code server, you can develop remotely on the server that you're deploying on. And this also helps for just the general workflow. Say if you're developing a website, like I'll be, um, for my own website, you'll be able to have a, a quicker workflow where you're, you're writing your code, you're saving it, and then you can see the changes in another tab immediately. Similar to how you would run it locally on your own machine but it's already there on the server, ready to go live once it's done. There's not that kind of transfer process that you'd have to do. And let me show you a demo of it right now that's already running on my own server. So if I run the command code server, and this is what we're gonna be setting up in just a minute, it'll go to port 880. Now if I go to my web browser and type in my IP address of my server with port 880, I'm prompted with the login screen. And then I will copy the password that was sent once I ran the command paste that there, press enter, and then I'll be prompted with a the web version of Visual Studio Code. Now as you can see this looks just like the desktop version of Visual Studio Code and the benefits of this are that it is basically the desktop version of Visual Studio Code. I have themes running, I have this icon theme on the side, um, I have linting for Python, uh, everything's running pretty much as if it was the desktop version. There are some extensions that you can't uh, run I know that live server wasn't working from when I tried to test it, but it's not really necessary because the second you uh, save the file, it's already live on the server regardless because you're already there, which is the really cool thing. So when I make a change in my index.html, I save it. More than likely, if I jump to the other IP address, which is just without port 880, um, the, the changes are already there, which is really, really cool. So now let's jump onto the other test server I have to get this set up. Now, for this, I recommend DigitalOcean. That's what I'll be, I'll be using for this. Uh, I'm using it on an Ubuntu LAMP stack, um, 18.04 uh, on the $5 a month server configuration. It's, it's the easiest and the cheapest. But if, you, if you're really going for deployment, you can go as far as you want, as high as you want. And it, it'll run probably about the same anyway. So I'm already SSH'd into the server. And what I'm going to do is navigate to the bin folder of the server. CD slash bin. Now, in the description below, there'll be a link to the code server GitHub page, and that's this here, and where you'll go is releases. Now, under releases, you'll copy the link for the linuxtar.gz. So we'll copy the link address. We can minimize this now. And while in the bin folder, we're going to do the command wget and paste this. This will get the targz into this directory. Now, once we have that tar.gz in the bin directory, what we're going to do is extract it. So now we have to run the command tar x v z f and now code server. And I'm when I when I do that and it autofills, I'm just pressing tab. So this will now extract that uh, tar.gz into this folder called code server to blah blah blah. And I'll show you right now. So if I clear this, we'll press LS. And now you can see here that we have the folder with the saved name. We will CD into this directory. We'll clear that out. We'll LS. And now there's only four files in this directory. The most important one is code server right here. These are the things we'll ignore. What I'm going to do now is move this code server folder out of this directory into bin. To do that, it's a pretty easy command. It's MV code server slash bin and now if we ls code server is gone it's outside of this directory now we can cd up a directory cd dot dot slash we're back in bin and we're just going to delete those folders the folder and the file so rm dash rf code server 2 we'll press tab that'll remove the folder and to remove the tar.gz. Okay. And now that we ls, we can now see the code server is right here. 
Now, the reason why we wanted to get into bin is because bin allows us, once it's in this directory, we can run the command anywhere in the environment, anywhere in the Linux environment. So if I go back to the root, I can run code server right here. So now code server is running, and this is what I hit when I first did it, and didn't understand why this didn't work on my first shot. So we'll copy the IP address of the server again from DigitalOcean. So this is just the main directory. This is the main path of the of the website here, and we'll be greeted with the splash screen of um, DigitalOcean. But now if we 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 are on localhost 880, so that's where we'll have to go is port 880. So if we go here to 880, we'll notice there's nothing there. It will not load. And that's because the port of 880 is not open yet. So we have to control C to get out of that, stop running the server. This will not load. And the command that we have to run now is sudo ufw allow 880. And up, that'll update the rule for the ufw. And if we clear this out now, and we run code server again and refresh this we'll now have the prompt for code server we have the login screen and just like before we will copy this password paste it here and enter our visual studio code environment and that's it it's pretty simple a lot of the tutorials i found online were they were fine they were most of them were pretty good but i just wanted to to make this tutorial pretty quickly just to show you what it is and, and, and kind of the features of it. Just like Visual Studio Code, you can go in here and we can download Python uh, to get that going. Uh, C++, the same thing, code running, uh, code browsing, debugging, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I really like it. I, I even think you could even run this as, say if you're a student like me, I'm getting my bachelor's in computer science. So say if you're in class and you don't want to have a, if say if you don't have a powerful laptop at home, uh, or you don't want to bring a powerful laptop to class, you could just run a Chromebook with this and still be able to develop in C++ and then bring it home and open the tab right at home and you'll have the exact same environment. There's no, The continuity is there, which I really like. I, I really feel like that could really benefit uh, the workflow, especially in website development as well. There's no... Um, you don't really lose that continuity when you're developing. And that's what I find a lot, especially with, with me and my multiple uh, operating systems, as I usually mention, Linux, Mac, and Windows. Uh, me jumping around isn't healthy, and uh, especially when I pop an idea and I have to program something, well, I can just open a tab in Chrome and pop in without having to jump into Mac to do something. And I, I usually develop in Mac uh, nowadays anyway. But let me know if you want to see any tutorials, possibly on Flask. That's what I'm developing my own website in. It's going to be Flask with Python. Uh, if you're interested in any tutorials on, on how I'm going to be doing that and maybe the trials and tribulations as I go along doing that, uh, let me know in the comment section below if that would be something cool. I'd like to get into more programming tutorials, stuff like that, uh, as I want to I wanna grow the channel, not away from Linux, but expand along with Linux, because Linux is the core of the channel, but there's so much more that we can build upon uh, as that is the kind of foundation of it. So, as always, my name's Anton Soares. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video.